Between 2007 and 2024, Florida dumped over 500,000 tons of oyster shells into the Gulf of Mexico, just offshore from Cedar Key. Environmental groups protested, local fishermen predicted disaster, critics called it ocean dumping, disguised as conservation. But 18 months after the first shells hit the seafloor, something started forming that marine biologists didn't expect. The dumping sites transformed into thriving reef ecosystems, supporting more marine life than the surrounding natural reefs. What was supposed to be waste disposal became one of the most successful marine habitat restoration projects in U.S. history. The oyster shells came from restaurants and seafood processing plants across Florida. Every year, Florida's seafood industry generates 40,000 tons of oyster shell waste. Traditionally, this goes to landfills where it takes up space and provides zero ecological value. But in 2007, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission started collecting these shells instead of trashing them and began depositing them in specific offshore locations along Florida's Gulf Coast. Here's what makes this so remarkable. Those shells didn't just pile up on the ocean floor. They triggered a cascade of ecological processes that essentially rebuilt marine ecosystems that had been degraded or destroyed. The shells became the foundation for something far more valuable than anyone anticipated. The initial shell deposits looked exactly like what critics feared. Piles of dead oyster shells sitting on sandy seafloor. No visible life. Just calcium carbonate debris dumped offshore. Marine biologists, monitoring the sites, documented exactly what you'd expect from dumping half a million tons of anything into the ocean. Shells settled, created mounds, and displaced sediment. For the first few months, it looked like expensive ocean littering. Microscopic organisms started colonizing the shells. Bacteria first, forming biofilms on the calcium carbonate surfaces. Then, diatoms and other microalgae. These organisms didn't just land randomly. They specifically targeted the oyster shells because calcium carbonate provides an ideal surface for attachment in ways that sand doesn't. Within six months, the shells were covered in a thin layer of biological growth. Still not impressive visually, but ecologically, this was the critical first step. Those microscopic organisms created the base of a food web that would eventually support thousands of larger creatures. But here's what the scientists didn't predict. The colonization speed was three to four times faster than typical artificial reef development. Normally, when you sink concrete structures or decommissioned ships to create artificial reefs, it takes two to three years before significant biological colonization occurs. The oyster shells hit that stage in six months. Oyster shells are made of aragonite, a form of calcium carbonate that dissolves slightly in seawater and releases calcium ions. These ions make the immediate water chemistry more alkaline, which accelerates the growth of calcifying organisms like barnacles, tube worms, and eventually, new oysters. The shells weren't just physical structures. They were chemically active surfaces that essentially fertilized their own colonization. By the end of year one, the shell piles were completely unrecognizable from the original deposits. Every square inch of shell surface was covered with marine growth. Barnacles dominated, forming thick crusts across the shells. Tube worms built calcium carbonate tubes. Sponges attached and began filtering water. The shells had transformed from waste material into living substrate. But the real ecological explosion happened with the oysters themselves. Baby oysters, called spat, need hard surfaces to attach to. In their natural life cycle, they prefer attaching to other oyster shells. The problem is that Florida's natural oyster reefs have been decimated by decades of over-harvesting, pollution, and coastal development. There aren't enough shells in the environment for young oysters to settle on. The dumped shells solved this problem instantly. Each shell became a potential attachment site for oyster spat. And because the shells were concentrated in specific areas rather than scattered across miles of seafloor, oyster larvae settling from the water column had extremely high success rates finding suitable habitat. 
Marine biologists documenting the sites found baby oysters attaching to the shells within the first year. By year two, those oysters had grown to maturity and were producing their own larvae, creating a self-sustaining population. By year three, the shell deposits had transformed into functioning oyster reefs with densities comparable to or exceeding historical natural reefs in the same region. The numbers are staggering. One cubic meter of dumped shells in the Cedar Key site supported an average of 847 live oysters by year three. Comparable sandy bottom nearby supported zero oysters. The shells created habitat where none existed before. Oyster reefs aren't just important for oysters, they're crucial habitat for dozens of fish species. The three-dimensional structure provides hiding places for small fish. The oysters filter massive amounts of water, improving water quality. The reef attracts prey species, which attracts predators. Within two years of the shell deposits, fish surveys around the sites showed dramatic increases in both species diversity and population density. Redfish, one of Florida's most economically important sport fish, showed up in huge numbers. Juvenile redfish use oyster reefs as nursery habitat, hiding among the shells while they grow large enough to avoid predation. Sites with shell deposits showed redfish densities five to eight times higher than nearby areas without reefs. Sheepshead, another species that feeds primarily on barnacles and other reef-dwelling organisms, and numerous other species followed. What started as shell waste had become prime fishing habitat. But here's the economic impact that changed everything. Charter fishing captains who initially opposed the shell dumping started requesting more deposits near their fishing grounds. The reefs were attracting so many fish that they became known fishing hotspots. What was controversial environmental management became celebrated habitat creation once the results became undeniable. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission documented fish populations at shell dump sites versus control sites without shells. The difference was stark. Shell reef sites supported 340% more fish biomass than adjacent sandy bottom. Species diversity increased by 280%. The shells didn't just create habitat for oysters. They created functioning ecosystems supporting entire food webs. Oysters are filter feeders. A single adult oyster filters 30 to 50 gallons of water per day, removing algae, sediment, bacteria, and excess nutrients. When you create an oyster reef with hundreds of thousands of oysters, the water quality impact becomes measurable at ecosystem scale. Once fully colonized by oysters, we're filtering an estimated 2.5 billion gallons of water per day. That's billion, with a B. All of that water flowing through oyster gills was being cleaned of excess nitrogen and phosphorus from agricultural runoff treated sewage discharge, and other pollution sources. Water quality monitoring around the shell reefs showed measurable improvements in clarity, dissolved oxygen levels, and nutrient concentrations. The oysters were essentially providing free water treatment on a scale that would cost tens of millions of dollars if humans tried to replicate it with mechanical systems. But the benefits cascaded further. Clearer water means more sunlight penetration. More sunlight means seagrass can grow in deeper water. Seagrass provides habitat for juvenile fish, manatees, and sea turtles. The shell reefs weren't just creating localized habitat. They were improving conditions for marine life across much larger areas through water filtration. Research published by University of Florida marine scientists documented seagrass bed expansion near shell reef sites. Areas that had been too turbid for seagrass growth became clear enough to support healthy beds within three to four years of shell deposition. The shells triggered a positive feedback loop where oysters improved water quality, which allowed seagrass to expand, which further improved habitat quality and supported even more marine life. In 2017, Hurricane Irma, a Category 4 hurricane, made landfall near the Cedar Key Shell Reef sites. Coastal communities braced for catastrophic storm surge and wave damage.
After the storm passed, damage assessment teams made an unexpected observation. Shorelines adjacent to the Shell Reef sites experienced 30 to 40 percent less erosion than comparable shorelines without nearby reefs. Natural reefs have always provided storm protection, but the scale of protection from the restored shell reefs was larger than expected. The reefs had grown complex structures with high rugosity, meaning lots of surface area, and complex shapes that break up wave energy efficiently. Economic analyses calculated that the erosion prevention from shell reefs near Cedar Key saved an estimated $2.8 million in coastal property damage during Hurricane Irma alone. That's from a restoration project that cost about $5 million total over 15 years. The return on investment wasn't just ecological, it was financial. Florida's coastal communities took notice. What started as a somewhat experimental habitat restoration program became a coastal resilience strategy. More shell collection and deposition programs were initiated. More sites were selected. The project expanded from a few experimental sites to a statewide initiative. Marine biologists monitoring the shell reefs documented species showing up that hadn't been seen in those areas in decades. Stone crabs, which require hard substrate to hide under, colonize the reefs in large numbers. Octopuses, which use reef crevices as dens, appeared at sites where they'd been absent for years. Sea stars, which feed on oysters and barnacles, returned to areas where they'd vanished due to lack of prey. But the most unexpected discovery was sea turtles. Researchers using underwater cameras documented turtles feeding on crabs, mollusks, and other reef-dwelling prey. The reefs had become valuable foraging habitat for an endangered species. Dive surveys in 2022 documented over 40 different fish species utilizing a single large shell reef site, plus numerous invertebrate species, several turtle species, and occasional dolphins hunting fish attracted to the reef. Biodiversity at shell reef sites was comparable to natural limestone reefs in the area and significantly higher than any nearby soft-bottom habitat. The ecological transformation was complete. What started as dumping restaurant waste had created complex, biodiverse reef ecosystems functionally indistinguishable from natural reefs. In some metrics, the restored reefs actually outperformed natural reefs that had been degraded by decades of environmental stress. Artificial reef programs have mixed success. Sunken ships attract fish, but don't create self-sustaining ecosystems. Concrete reef balls provide structure, but don't support the same level of biodiversity as natural reefs. Many artificial reefs become fish aggregators rather than fish producers, meaning they concentrate existing fish rather than increasing overall fish populations. The oyster shell reefs work differently because they recreated natural ecological processes rather than just providing physical structure. Natural oyster reefs build themselves. Live oysters attach to dead oyster shells. Those oysters die and become substrate for more oysters. The reef grows vertically and horizontally through biological processes. It's self-maintaining and self-repairing. The dumped shells jump-started this natural process. They provided the initial substrate that wild oyster populations needed to re-establish. Once the first generation of oysters colonized the shells and reproduced, the reef became biologically self-sustaining. No additional human intervention required. The shells triggered natural reef-building processes that continued on their own. This is why marine biologists call it restoration rather than artificial reef creation. Artificial reefs are human structures mimicking natural habitat. Shell reefs are natural habitat rebuilt using waste material to bypass the limiting factor preventing natural recovery. Once the Florida results became clear, other Gulf Coast states took notice. Alabama started oyster shell recycling programs in 2015. Mississippi launched shell depositioning in 2018. Louisiana, which has the Gulf's largest oyster industry, initiated massive shell planting programs using similar methods. By 2023, over 800,000 tons of oyster shells had been deposited across the Gulf Coast through various restoration programs. The accumulated results showed consistent patterns.
Shell deposits triggered rapid ecosystem development. Oyster populations rebounded. Fish populations increased. Water quality improved. Coastal erosion decreased. The success led to economic calculations that shocked policymakers. Every ton of shell dumped generated an estimated $85 to $120 in ecosystem services over 10 years. That includes commercial fishery value, recreational fishing value, water quality improvement, and coastal protection. The half million tons Florida dumped generated somewhere between $40 million and $60 million in measurable economic benefits. The program that critics called wasteful ocean dumping became one of the highest return environmental investments the state had made. Costs per ton of shells, including collection, transport, and deposition, ranged from $8 to $15. Benefits per ton exceeded costs by factors of 6 to 10. The oldest shell reef sites, approaching 20 years old, are showing characteristics that exceed initial restoration goals. They're not just restored reefs, they're in some ways better than the original natural reefs they're replacing. The deposited shells created reefs with higher structural complexity than most degraded natural reefs. The shells were piled deliberately to create three-dimensional structures with maximum surface area. This creates more habitat space per square meter of seafloor than lower relief natural reefs. Fish population surveys show that older shell reef sites support fish densities approaching pristine natural reef systems and exceeding degraded natural reefs by wide margins. Biodiversity metrics show similar patterns. The shell reefs aren't just adequate replacement habitat, they're premium habitat. But perhaps most remarkably, the reefs are expanding on their own. Oysters growing on the dumped shells are reproducing successfully, causing the reefs to grow outward. Shells from dead oysters accumulate, raising the reef vertically. The reefs that started as deliberate shell deposits are now growing through natural processes exactly like wild reefs did historically. Marine biologists estimate that some shell reef sites have doubled in footprint since original deposition through natural reef growth. They're living, growing ecosystems that will continue developing for decades. The initial investment of dumping shells created structures that now maintain and expand themselves. The Florida oyster shell story reveals something crucial about environmental restoration. Sometimes the best solution isn't high-tech engineering or massive funding, Sometimes it's taking waste from one place and putting it where nature can use it. The shells were going to landfills. Now they're building reefs. The project succeeded because it worked with natural processes instead of fighting them. The shells didn't create artificial habitat. They restored the conditions necessary for natural habitat to rebuild itself. That distinction matters. Artificial structures require maintenance. Natural processes are self-sustaining. Other coastal regions are learning from this. Oyster shell recycling programs now exist in 15 states. Similar approaches are being tested with other shell species, coral fragments, and even limestone rubble. The principle is consistent. Provide the substrate that natural ecosystem engineers need, and they'll do the rest. What formed from dumping 500,000 tons of oyster shells offshore isn't just a collection of reefs. It's a demonstration that large-scale ecosystem restoration is possible using materials we currently treat as waste. The unbelievable part isn't that reefs formed. It's that the solution was so simple, so effective, and was sitting in landfills the entire time.